the first step is, of course, getting to know the team, the project team, developers, subject matter experts for that particular product, and a sort of understanding the documentation ask and need. And as technical communicators, that's where we come in and sort of determine what sort of documentation and how many documents and what format a particular project needs. Welcome to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast, where Gowri Ram Kumar of Document 360 finds the best SaaS self service knowledge bases in the world and then interviews their creators. Let's get started with today's episode. Good day, everyone. Our guest today is Sri Patabiraman, Senior Technical Writer at Extreme Networks. Welcome, Sri, to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Gauri, for having me in the podcast today. It's uh, uh, I'm l- really looking forward to answering some of your questions today. Super. So, Sri, your LinkedIn profile looks very interesting. So, before we get into more details, share a little bit more about yourself and how did you initially got into documentation, please? Sure. Uh, so I'm Sri Padabi Raman, and uh, like you mentioned before, I work as a senior technical writer at Extreme Networks. So in my job, I handle various wireless networking devices, products, product-based documentation, and uh, and I am an active member of the STC, which is um, the Society for Technical Communication uh, Community, and uh, that's something that I'm. Um, you know, very involved with, and I love meeting people through that and networking with fellow technical communicators through STC. And to answer your second question about how I got into technical writing, um, like many other technical writers in the field, I got into the field by accident too. Uh, I actually have a background in accounting and finance, but I also really enjoyed writing Um, So in my undergrad, I had a few electives that was writing based, and I realized that that's something that I was up for pursuing as a career. But I didn't have a lot of background in technical writing at that point. So I got to know a little bit more about the field and I started applying for jobs and I got a position as an entry level technical writer. And as they say, the rest is history. And I've been in the field for over a decade now. Fantastic. So it's amazing uh, journey, Sri. So and I'm sure you're, you're, you are already inspiring quite a lot of people. And uh, just uh, let's talk a little bit more about your background. So you said you have a bachelor's degree in commerce with specialization in corporate secretaryship. Yes, that's right. Fantastic. So as far as I know, both are a little bit more different fields. So how have the skills you gained through your education influence your current career technical writing? That's a great question. Um, so when I started out uh, in undergrad, they teach you about, uh, especially in corporate secretaryship, they teach you about um, various things you do uh, to manage a company and various documents involved in making sure that your company is up to date on things. And um, especially with accounting and finance, you also have a little bit background of business in which you get to know how to manage projects and things like that. And Mm -hmm. I I have to credit that part of my education um, to all the project management skills that I have today because that laid for a really good foundation. And today uh, it helps me build my project and software development life cycle and documentation development life cycle in a great way because I can port that skills that I have gained uh, from my education into the profession. And also uh, when it comes to time management and your language skills, um, it it makes a huge difference because the university I attended, they had uh, IELTS level of English. So it was mandatory that we went through that sort of training So you are trained to be a global uh, speaker and you're trained to be uh, addressing a global audience um, because when you actually see documents that corporate secretaryship involves, um, again, like I mentioned, it involves a lot of documents that 
the businesses use um, within within an organization. And similar to tech writing, it's very specific and it is for a targeted audience. And, uh, you know, you're addressing the stakeholders when you're developing documents like that. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, as technical writers, our top priority is our users and our audience. So it does help you uh, with your audience analysis part and uh, mainly your documentation development lifecycle part. Thank you for explaining that, uh, Shri. It now gives me a clear picture of um, how the courses are helping in different aspects of technical writing. And as you very well said, the various uh, aspects you gain through the corporate secretaryship has definitely helped you in many ways. Uh, so what about the documentation process at Extreme Networks? Um, what's your, what's your um, uh, take on that? Um, so Extreme Networks is, um, they uh, are like um, concentrating on network-based devices and we develop um, software for that and hardware for that. Um, so I dipped my feet in both software documentation and hardware documentation. And we have a very streamlined process with an information architect on our team. Um, so it's really nice to have someone in-house to whom we can go and get ideas from and uh, to whom we can like uh, refer to for uh, questions and clarifications about the information architecture when we develop documents. And uh, we use Oxygen XML and um, STL uh, Trillion Docs for developing our content. So we have a very streamlined content management system uh, at Extreme. So, uh, and uh, I would explain my team as sort of a mid-sized uh, to a large-sized te technical writing team. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone is an experienced technical writer. So there's a lot of opportunity for collaboration, not just within the team, but even within the organization. Um, so if I have to explain the documentation development process, I would call it as a mature and streamlined process. Great. So can I ask you how big is your team right now um, with regard to documentation? Uh, I would say anywhere between 25 to 30 people. Wow, that's quite a lot of uh, team members. That's great. Uh, so what about the documentation workflow then? So where does your um, initial conversations begin and how does the flow go? Sure. So when it comes to documentation development, uh, it's mainly a, a lot of, a lot of uh, team members are documentation leads for their projects. So uh, what we do is, um, of course, when, when we know that a project requires um, documentation, the our team director gets to know about it. And if there's a documentation request for it, um, then we are assigned to that uh, particular product. And uh, the first step is, of course, getting to know the team, uh, the project team, developers, subject matter experts uh, for that particular product and a sort of understanding the documentation ask and need. And as te technical communicators, that's where we come in and sort of determine what sort of documentation and how many documents and what format uh, a particular project needs. Um, so there is a lot of scope for creativity when it comes to uh, presenting document in a certain way or what sort of document a project might require. And from there on, um, we take lead on it and we interact with the project team and um, develop a documentation plan for the project, um, which is then signed off and made sure that we are delivering everything that the project requires. And uh, once that happens, um, there is weekly meetings or you know, bi-weekly meetings, depending on the nature of the project and how it is developed. And uh, we are involved right from the beginning when the product is in development. So we can determine uh, how to incorporate uh, content into the documentation we are producing. And uh, we also have a thorough uh, online review process where we get feedback uh, from our peers as well as the subject matter experts uh, from the project team. And uh, once that happens, uh, we incorporate those feedback and publish the documentation and release it with the product to make sure that the audience have the required information they need. And uh, sometimes we do get feedback directly from our audience 
And when that happens, we ensure that we incorporate that and keep our documentation updated as uh, per the need. That, that's really great to know, uh, Shri, um, the amount of people you interact with during the uh, production of these documentation and uh, the tweakings and uh, uh, iterations you go through. Uh, I also wanted to just uh, go back to a flash, your flashback a little bit. Uh, so you had your first technical writing job in India, right? Yes, that's correct. So did you notice any differences between the India and uh, United States in technical writing specs? Yes and no. <laughs> I think when it comes to composition of tech writing teams, I felt it was similar. Uh, when, it, uh, when I have to think about tool sets that we use, there was a bit of difference in that. Um, and I would say, um, you know, the work styles, um, differ a little bit and um, and of course you know cultural differences that everyone brings to the table there is that um, but that's what makes uh, technical writing teams unique um, so yeah yes and no when it comes to differences did I answer your question yes yes absolutely I mean uh, at the end of the day um, it's important you cover all aspects of the product or services you provide and the key customer um, as your main focus, right? The way they read uh, the article. Yes, exactly. Fantastic. Um, and I also wanted to uh, appreciate you on the contribution to the community through STC, Society for Technical Communication. I think it's been over six years, I guess. Yes, that's right. Okay, great. And um, so how important is it to you to help advance the craft of technical communication? Um, so since I am actively involved both, you know, as a technical writer and um, actively involved with STC, um, and since I have sort of like started out this journey from not knowing what technical writing was and to where I am today, I see this as an opportunity to help people like me or people who, who are new to the field or people who have questions um, and to give back to the community through STC. And it also acts as a great platform for me to learn from my peers and to understand how the technology trends are going and what my, uh, you know, uh, technical writing peers are doing at their jobs. And uh, it's a great collaborative community. And that's something that I have noticed about the technical communication community in all these years that I have been involved is that everybody is open and willing to help you out. And if you go with any questions to anyone, um, they are open to answering it or, you know, they are even open to putting you in touch with someone who can help you out. So that's something that's great about the community. And, um, you know, there is that willingness to share knowledge and information readily with someone. And that's what makes us stand out um, in my experience. Nice. Uh, that, that's uh, great to know, um, Shri. And again, once again, appreciate all the um, contributions you are making towards that community uh, through this channel. Uh, now, again, um, you did mention that it's been over a decade since you started as a technical writer. So now looking back, what do you wish you had known as an entry level technical writer? Wow, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing this answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so let me see if I can do justice to this question because um, it, it is a very interesting question. Um, so looking back, um, I think I would I would tell my entry level self that um, it's a lifelong learning journey, and um, that's something that I have noticed. The learning never stops. And uh, there is something new in the horizon or there's a new challenge to take up um, pretty frequently, uh, be it a, a project that you're working on for your team or be it uh, learning about uh, a new tool or adapting to new trends in documentation and collaborating with people. There is some sort of challenge that comes with the job and that is something that never stops. And you're constantly learning and evaluating yourself and updating yourself um, to keep up with, you know, uh, the ask from the industry too. Um, so that's something that I would tell myself that, you know, be ready to learn and be on the lookout for new opportunities all the time. 
Thank you. And uh, I'm sure you wished there was somebody like you in, in, in some community forum to help you in the entry level. <laughs> yes. And, uh, it, you know, I've been pretty uh, gifted in that sense that I've had great mentors in, in my managers and co-workers who have um, helped me a lot, especially when I was starting out in the career. So I do have to, you know, credit all, all the managers that I've had. I've been one of those lucky people's. Um, I'm still in touch with uh, everyone that I have worked with, um, who I have reported to. And it's always nice to, um, you know, see them, like see me grow at the same time. Um, you know, I know that I always have a mentor and like my managers whom I can go and ask back questions to. Mm -hmm. Superb. Um, so let's just talk about your current uh, role then. Uh, you did mention that you have a big team. Um, and how do you report on your documentation? Um, so as I mentioned before, we, uh, depending on the project, uh, uh, mostly senior writers lead the documentation efforts. But we do have uh, managers that we report to and we have a director on our team. And we have a very open and transparent communication when it comes to our team. And we have uh, monthly team meetings or bi-weekly team meetings where we discuss uh, about projects that we are doing. We share information. And if we have any questions that we think we might benefit from getting inputs from everyone on the team, then we include it to the agenda um, when it comes to interacting during team meetings. And... Um, you know, we and we don't work in silos. We make sure that uh, we are addressing the needs of the organization and the audience, and we always keep that in mind. Um, and it's it's really great to have a team that's um, that honors and that encourages uh, writers on the team to have an open conversation and discussion, uh, and they give the platform for you to um, discuss. Um, various documentation efforts, either you're undertaking or even issues that you may have. So it's always refreshing to have that perspective and take um, when it comes to the larger team. All right. That, that's nice to know. And again, coming back to your 10 years of experience with technical writing, um, I'm sure you are one of the best person to ask this question. What has been the most important innovation when it comes to document tracking uh, during your career? I would say just how um, information architecture has evolved. I am um, I cannot like pinpoint a particular tool or technology in this regard, um, but just how content delivery has changed. Um, you are not producing just documents for products. Uh, a lot of companies are looking at micro content and videos and various different forms of content um, that you are uh, giving to the audience. So if I have to just not pinpointing just the technology, but just the whole way content delivery has changed over the years, I think that's something that we have come a long way from the days of just traditional uh, printed docs. Nice, I think that's a very different answer to what we've had so far. <laughs> Um, one thing I forgot to ask you is uh, your current uh, documentation with Extreme Networks, are they um, publicly available? Can anybody access it or is it a privately owned uh, like with the username and password? Yeah, you can. Like uh, It's publicly available. So we have a documentation portal where people cannot, uh, our uh, users can go and um, refer to documents depending on the product line. Okay, great. So in that sense, uh, are you aware of any organic search traffic uh, being generated from the knowledge base? And uh, do you work closely with the marketing team as well? Yes, so we have a tech team and a product marketing team. And um, that's something that we've been actively uh, pursuing uh, within the organization. And um, that's something that, you know, we always take into consideration as to um, how we can use information like that to our advantage and how we can uh, tweak content and um, give content that the audience is looking for. We haven't really gotten like too um, in depth into it, but that's something that we have been like actively having conversations about and how we can, you know, use that to our advantage. 
Okay, super. So I think with that, um, I've done with my uh, common questions. Should we move on to the rapid fire round now, uh, Shri? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. So you did mention about your managers in the initial days, but who have you learned the most about documentation from in your career? Again, I cannot like just say one person or, um, you know, I, I say I would say that it's, uh, you know, I would say it's my team because I learned so much from them. And I have to credit my STC community, too, because that's where I'm um, exchanging information and ideas with everyone. So I would collectively say it's the tech com community because there is so much to learn from everyone that I meet and come across. Okay. Uh, can you share a documentation related resource you have consumed recently? Um, sure. So I'm a member of uh, Center for Information Development, and they have some really good articles and information on uh, information development management. So that's that's a great resource. Sorry. Can you can you mention that name one more time, Shri, if you don't mind? Yeah, it's a Center for Information Development Management. It's called CIDM. Okay, CIDM. Okay, that's great. Super. And it's uh, has it got like a LinkedIn page for people to become a member of or something like that? Yes, they have a website where you can um, go and register to be a, a member. So um, you can, um, it, if you a Google Center for Information Development Management, it's, uh, you can have that information. From All right, CIDM. Super. One, my last question to you for today is, uh, what is that one piece of documentation related advice you would give to your 20 year old self? I'm sure you're still very young, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> talk to your SMEs, talk to them and, um, you know, get all the information you need and don't be afraid to ask questions. Yes, that's, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how much ever you grow uh, within the organization, just don't be scared of asking questions. True. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No matter if you're a, an entry level person or an experienced person, that um, something that's something that never stops you. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions and learn about your product, and uh, you know, give it give it your best shot. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Shri, for sharing your thoughts and uh, giving us a lot of useful information in the last 20 minutes or so. So before we say bye to our audience, would you like to add anything uh, more that I have forgot to ask you today? No, I think it has been a uh, wonderful interaction with you. And I've really enjoyed answering all the questions you had for me. Super. Thank you, Shri. And amazing journey you had. And it's all great to share with us too to, through this podcast. I'm sure it's going to reach uh, to many people who are planning to take this uh, career seriously. And uh, good luck with all the projects then. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. Please head to iTunes, rate, and provide honest feedback on the podcast. See you next week.